Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Um, if you've been following my videos, the last few videos at least, um, you'll be aware that my lathe has been working really hard, uh, mostly on uh, jobs for the D7 Bantam here. Um, but um, it's definitely been earning its keep and I thought it needed a bit of TLC, a bit of uh, well-earned maintenance. So I set off to um, change the oil in the headstock gearbox and the Norton quick change gearbox and to do a little bit of um, maintenance in general really but as these things do it's escalated and um, I've discovered a few issues that need attention um, need me to get on top of them right away really so what was going to be uh, how to change the oil in your Maximat lathe is now probably going to be um, two videos um, sorting these issues out so um, a lot of you guys I know love the lathe videos, some of you come here for the bike stuff. Um, I think there's probably something in this video for all of you. Um, machine maintenance is, is important, so um, hopefully you'll enjoy it. But anyway, um, I'll stop waffling on and we'll get on and do some work. So since we did the last job, I've just been having a little bit of a clean up in the workshop. It soon gets cluttered in here. Um, there's not a lot of space and um, things can get quite messy quite quickly and I thought while I was cleaning the lathe up now would be a great time to do a little bit of maintenance so um, I'm just going to change the oil in the headstock and the Norton gearbox and um, I thought it might be interesting for you guys to see um, the lathe a little bit more closely a little, little bit closer detail and um, have a look inside the gearbox um, so that's what we're doing. That's an 11 millimeter spanner. And uh, I've made a little deflector out of some aluminium tape so that the oil goes into this, um, this metal bowl that I've got. And not everywhere. I mean, it only drips into the, uh, into the chip pan anyway, so it's not really a problem. But um, yeah, we'll just. Um, get it to go where we want it to and this is 10 weight oil in this thing um, I think Emco used to do their own brand of oil and uh, they tell you to use 10 weight oil in the headstock but they don't tell you what oil to use in the Norton gearbox and I think the, the assumption is that you would have used Emco's own brand of oil back when these things were you know, still in manufacture and fairly new but that's not available anymore, so I use a 10 weight um, air tool oil in the headstock, uh, Senga green oil actually, and then I just use a 30 weight um, straight oil in the Norton gearbox. If you put anything heavier than a 10 weight in the in the headstock, you find that you can't get the um, it won't pull the maximum speed. It will actually um, put too much load on it, so you need to use the right stuff. But yeah, in the Norton box, I just use a straight 30, um, the sort of stuff you would put in a lawnmower engine. And what I normally do is I get a bit of white spirit once the oils come out of the uh, the gearbox, uh, the headstock rather. I I rinse it out with a little bit of white spirit and just flush it through. I don't run the motor or anything like that um, because obviously the gears wouldn't be lubricated and the bearings wouldn't be lubricated but I just flush it through with a little bit of white spirit and then put the new oil in. So I'm just getting the dregs out of the Norton box now. Um, I've had to do this in a couple of stages because the angle that I hold the, the tray at um, it fills up quite quickly and uh, yeah, you can end up with it all over your feet, which is not good. in and 
Let me just empty that out. Let's get to the oil drain. Which I will show you in a moment. I'm sure you've seen one before. Let's see if there's any more for any more. Just a little bit. Right. Just let the dregs of that drain out. And uh, then we'll have a look inside the gearboxes. So you see, I've refitted the chuck. And uh, I'm just whizzing the chuck around a little bit. Just so that the, um, the white spirit that I've put inside the headstock will splash around and wash any dirty oil or uh, you know, dirt and debris down into the sun and then uh, I will drain that out and we'll be ready for some fresh oil but before we put the fresh oil in I'll go handheld and let you have a bit of a peek inside the gearbox uh, as far as you can see anyway. So there's the white spirit coming out. Yeah, there's a few black specks. Nothing much really though. Right, I shall take that away. I think what I'll do is I'll just let that drain for a few a few minutes. It can just dribble into the drip tray at the bottom. And uh, then we'll go handheld and have a look inside. Okay, handheld adventure. And that is the inside. Let me get you in the right light. That is the inside of the gearbox. And uh, excuse the wobbly camera work because I'm holding the work light with the other hand to stop it from springing back. There's one of the shift forks there. And they're known um, as a little bit of a weak point on the MCO machines. You've got to be very careful when you're shifting gears because they are white metal or a pot metal rather and um, they have been known to break and there's another one at this end but you can't really see it you can just see the outside edge of it there and they're connected via two shift levers on the front that give you all the different speeds and uh, you can see it's a combination of uh, metal and fiber gears you can't see the main headstock bearings because they're hidden uh, down there and down there I hope I'm not making you seasick but uh, there we go that is the inside of the, the headstock gearbox so we'll get some oil in there and put the lid back on right I'm gonna put some oil in um, just get the little torch so I can see what I'm doing there's a sight glass on the front of the um, machine here uh, but generally speaking, they get quite dirty. I've had this one out to clean it um, when I first got the machine. But um, I like to peer inside and uh, make sure that the level is right. Yep, that's perfect. So we can put the lid back on. The lid is just, um, it's, it's got these, I don't know if you can see that, can you? It's got these uh, grooves machined into it and they correspond with um, 
a recess here in the casting and what happens is the oil gets flung up it tracks its way um, across the top of the lid and then in this recess there are various holes drilled to allow the oil to go back inside the gearbox and uh, you don't get any leaks there's no gasket no sealant or anything um, it relies purely on the oil finding its way back uh, into the gearbox and it does work I've never had a drop of oil leak out of this uh, this headstock so it must have been a good design when they did it so we get all those uh, cheese headed screws started I just screw them down until they stop, I don't go bananas there's no need to that's our headstock oil change done uh, so we'll just whip the lid off the Norton box put some oil in there and you can have a bit of a peek inside and um, that'll be our oil changes done right so with our Norton box there's four cap head screws that secure the cover you've got to be very careful with the lever because if you allow it to overextend uh, beyond where it's supposed to be there's a little ball and spring that I think I mentioned in an earlier video that will fire out and you'll never find it again and um, there's a little shoe as well that um, that moves the the gear selection so I'm just going to be really really careful taking this out and I'm absolutely not going to move anything and as usual the little shoe has dropped into the bottom of the gearbox it normally lives but you can see the grease around the hole that's what I used to retain it last time I took this apart so I'll fish that out with some pliers and uh, we'll have a look inside the gearbox but you can just about see there the um, the upper shaft with its row of gears and you can see possibly there some selector dogs so let me just uh, fish that out the bottom of the gearbox and then we'll go handheld and have a look okay we're handheld and looking inside the Norton gearbox and um, it doesn't make for particularly pleasant viewing um, there's a lot of sludge in there um, there's some trace corrosion as well and um, I think what's happened is when we had the condensation problem uh, if you look back uh, in my previous videos you'll find one I think it's called the perils of condensation or something like that um, we had a big condensation problem when the weather changed and um, the lathe got quite a lot of uh, surface rust and so did the milling machine and a lot of tooling in here which we had to clean up and um, yeah I should have got on top of this earlier really um, I've dropped the oil out of it which was filthy I've cleaned it out with some white spirit and that's coming out filthy as well so I'm really not happy uh, with the condition of this gearbox so I've decided to remove it from the lathe um, as you can see it's a it's a separate box as it were um, you can see there that I've already pulled the um, the pin for the lead screw and I've slipped the uh, feed shaft out of the feed shaft clutch and they're actually shear pins and um, they're aluminium shear pins so that if you get a crash or a bind up on the lathe they will let go and kill the drive uh, rather than you suffering expensive damage uh, either in the gearbox or, or somewhere else on the lathe um, so that's quite a good feature but anyway I pulled those out because we're going to take the gearbox off we're going to get it in the parts washer give it a really good wash out um, probably strip it down and clean up these gears and shafts um, there's no point doing a job half-heartedly uh, what started out as an oil change is now going to be quite an extended maintenance so let's get on get the gearbox off right hopefully you can see that cap head that I'm shining the light on uh, that is actually beneath the gearbox and uh, I didn't think I was going to be able to get on it, but um, with a wobble extension, um, I'm able to get in there with a, a six millimeter um, Allen key socket, so we can uh, we can get that out and hopefully get it back in again. Um, I do think I might have to lift the lathe off the stand, um, which is uh, 
that's really taking the maintenance you know that's that's taking an oil change a long way isn't it really but um, if that's what you need to do it's what you need to do but um, I think we can get the gearbox out um, without having to resort to such measures right I've got that lower bolt out and there's two more up here um, run through the uh, again through the gearbox casting into the into the bed casting and these are um, six millimeter uh, head cap heads the six millimeter allen key cap heads and um, I think once these are out I'll probably ought to brace it with something can I think that once these are out the gearbox is pretty much liberated my engineering piece of wood is too big. Have I got a smaller engineering piece of wood? Possibly not, actually. There will have to be an engineering bit of aluminium plate instead. Right. At least if it drops, it won't drop very far. I will brace it with my hand. There we go. Righty. I think, I think that's it. Let's get it over on the bench. Right. I will switch you off and get you over to the bench so you can see what's going on. Right, there's our gearbox removed for maintenance and um, I've already taken the, the clutch. Uh, this is the feed shaft clutch. I've removed that. It's just another shear pin. Um, I knocked it out with a pin punch and a ball peen hammer. I just didn't do it on camera because if I did it on camera, the camera would rock all over the place because this bench isn't particularly sturdy. It's more of an assembly bench than a disassembly bench, I would say. But um, I do have some plans to brace it up a little bit. Now, we're going to take this cover off, which um, the transfer gears are in here, which actually, um, well, transfer, obviously, the power between the two shafts. So... I'm just going to undo this nut and then we've got some five millimeter cap heads by five millimeter i mean the size of the allen key that you need to take them out so let's uh let's get these out see what we're dealing with it's pretty filthy in there And so I need to revise the type of oil that I've been using because if we get a condensation problem again, we're just going to get the same issue. So my good friend Aid from AG Engineering uh, has advised me to use a particular type of hydraulic oil, um, which I can't remember the name of at the moment, but uh, I've ordered some. So when it comes through, uh, I'll show you it. Right, let's just make sure that we're not going to lose any bits. See if we can get this cover off. Let me just grab a high face or a plastic mallet. Haven't left any fasteners in, I don't think. Oh, not anyway. There we go. Oh, there was a gasket. We can remake a gasket, can't we? Right, so there's our transfer gears. They don't look in terrible condition. I don't know what this stuff is here. Oh, it's grease. They must have been greased from the factory. Because I don't think that's ever been off. So that grease is from 1973, I would imagine. So, um, probably due for renewal. We didn't need to take that note off, did we? Let's put that back on before we lose it. Right, so that's the transfer case off. And the old gasket, I'll get a proper clean up. And 
and I need to figure out how this comes apart. So we've got a circlip on the end of there. Um, I imagine we've probably got the same on the other end. Um, so let's turn it around. Oh. It's a weighty lump if you don't get a hold of it properly. Right, so we've got this bearing cover here. I imagine there's a bearing behind it. And uh, we've got this uh, this assembly here, which is where the um, the power is actually inputted from the change wheels. This is where the quadrant fits when it's in the lathe. It's coming this way. So we'll get these covers off. In fact, we'll take this cover off first. It's just two screws, and that should give us access to... Uh, Oh no, we can't, can we? We have to take these off first. Don't listen to me, I'm talking rubbish. We'll take these off, we'll take this cover off, and that should give us access to get the shafts out. Um, possibly we can take the shafts that way and avoid having to uh, disturb that circle. We'll see. I've never had this apart before, so uh, we are in uncharted territory. And I do have the parts book, which has an exploded diagram of this gearbox uh, to hand if we need it. So... Let me get those covers off and then we will uh, go from there. When I was talking absolute rot, um, some might say, as usual, that little cover did come off. Uh, I've taken the screws out of these covers, but um, I think we're going to have to take the snap ring off the end of, or the circlip if you prefer, off the end of this shaft, take that pinion off and then um, bring it out this way with the bearing. And then on this one here, there is a roll pin um, down this hole. And uh, I think once we release that, it will release this collar off the shaft, allow us to slide the shaft that way and remove the gears. There is a, um, a very tightly fitted um, spring circlip on the shaft here, fitted into a groove, which looks like it would be difficult to get out in situ. But I believe that once we've released this roll pin, the shaft will go that way and um, potentially we will be able to remove the gears. So let's remove the roll pin, have a look. There we go and as I mentioned to you I am deliberately stopping the camera whenever I'm going to um, knock a pin out or something like that because of the shake. Uh, it would spoil your enjoyment I think. Um, parallel pin punch and a little ball peen hammer. And uh, I don't think you could work on an MCO lathe unless you had a set of um, parallel punches because so many things are secured with roll pins. Now then, is this going to offer itself up to us? Doesn't feel as though it wants to. Maybe it's just quite a good fit on the shaft. Oh, it is turning, so there we go. I just don't want to force anything. Everything's so beautifully made on these machines that you don't want to hammer away or force anything because, quite frankly, um, if you damage it, you know, it would just be horrendous, really. Okay. So that is out of there. There's a bearing in there. Uh, sealed uh, sealed on this side. I imagine it's open on the other for the oil to circulate. But um, that appears to be as far as it's moving. So perhaps I will have to try to remove that. Um, my hands are completely in the way. Sorry. I think I will have to try and remove, if I can get it into shot, the little snap ring that lives here. So uh, I'll have a little bit of a head scratch and a little bit of a poke around and uh, I shall bring you back once I've got that sorted. Right, so I've moved things on a little bit. Let me bring you up to speed. Um, I have been studying the parts list. Um, it makes sense to uh, use the approved data if you've got it. Why guess if we've got the parts list there? So I've been having a look at that to figure out quite how this thing goes together and uh, we do need to remove this circlip or spring clip that's behind this 
gear here and then this shaft here will will pull out as you can see i've got the bearing caps off i warmed them up slightly with my heat gun um, rather than uh, knock or bang at anything we don't have any cracks or, or fractures and um, although um, i don't think these would crack or fracture because they're machined from um, steel rather than clout things and hit things it's always better to warm them up so i just got the heat gun on and um, they came out reasonably well uh, the other one is still attached as you can see and um, that bearing I think needs to be changed now there's a circlip on this side which holds the bearing into the housing and then there's another circlip on the end of the shaft which holds the shaft into the bearing so we need to take the bearing out with the shaft and then remove the shaft from the bearing so um, <clears throat> that makes sense that's what we're going to do uh, but first of all, we can hopefully withdraw this shaft from the gearbox. Let me get you in a better position so you can see inside. Uh, let's just move it back a tiny little bit. There we go. And I'm, my hands are probably going to get in the way now. But this is, um, it's keyed onto this shaft. I don't know if you can see the... Uh, the keyway, let me turn it a little bit. This this keyway runs right along the shaft and the um, the change lever is keyed into that shaft. And it's quite sticky, so hopefully it will pull all the way through. There we go. <clears throat> And there's a little sliver. I don't think will, I, will the camera pick that up? There's a little sliver of metal on the end there. Look, where we've had a burr. That's that's a burr that's um, that's been pulled off the shaft. So we'll have to give it all a bit of polish when we uh, put it back together. But that's that piece. So there we go. That's one shaft out, and then the change lever comes out in one piece. Good state of that, it's filthy. And this assembly is all held together with a, a circlip on this side. And there's the key look that runs in the shaft. Oh, you can't see it. I'm saying look, and it's not even in the, in the shot. There we go. There's the key that runs up and down the shaft. So let's put that to one side as an assembly. And then I've got to try and get this circlip. Uh, see if I can get you a view of it without trapping my fingers. There we go. My next task is to try and get this ring out of here without breaking it. Um, it looks special to type. It's very, very slim. And it doesn't have eye ends. It's just a plain ended uh, clip. So I'm going to have a go at um, easing that off. I'll need to concentrate, so I'm going to switch you off for a minute. And uh, I will get that off if I can, without breaking it. If it looks like it isn't going to come off, uh, I don't know. I want to change the bearings, so I was going to say I might just wash it out as it is, but let's see how we get on. Right, my friends, I think we've got it sussed. Um, the spring clip has released. And I've been able to work it with the gap in the in the spring clip um, adjacent to the key that is pinned to this shaft. Can't pull the key out because it's roll pinned in. But I've worked it along, and that's given us enough movement this way to be able to tilt the shaft up like this. And I think we can now take the components off the shaft and then withdraw the shaft. So let me just clear some space on the bench, and uh, we will put the, the component parts in order. Um, I know I've got the parts manual, but I think it pays to be methodical. So we've got a sleeve, then we've got a pinion with a drive dog. And then we have, what I would describe as a bull gear. It's a gear with a, a selector and a drive dog. 
Let's make room for the mushrooms. Let's get that out of the way. And then out comes the shaft with this gear still fitted. And you can see the, the snap ring there or the spring clip, whatever you want to call it. We can work that off, off the shaft and uh, and then this gear here will will come off once we've removed sorry you're out of shot again once we've removed the pins and removed the key so there we go i might just keep, keep that together and clean it all up as as one assembly we'll see we'll see so we now have just one shaft left uh, which is the um the lower shaft lots of gears on it to get you into a position where you can see that and you're going along with me on this I'm not you know I've not done any sort of pre-planning or pre-prep really we're just going along with it you can hear the bearings on that I think um, so let's figure out how this comes out I think there's a roll pin at one end from what I can figure out from the parts manual or maybe at both ends but I'm going to go have another quick look of the uh, parts manual and then we'll figure out how to get that apart and then that's the gearbox stripped we can start cleaning okay so it was just the two roll pins um, I checked the, uh, the parts book and uh, there we go there's one of them I knocked them out into the gearbox and uh, Spent ages fishing for them. So we've just got this shaft to take out now. Um, oh, it's come out with the bearing. So I'm just going to disassemble it in the same way as I did the other one and just take each piece off uh, and put them on the bench on a piece of this blue roll. Let me just move it out of the way slightly. Move these bits of wood. Let's get some fresh workshop roll to put down just so we keep everything in order there you go so i'm going to remove these components from the gearbox one by one uh, hopefully and they're keyed onto the shaft you can't see very much can you let me move you there we go that's a little bit better you're probably going to get a really good view of my hand though these are quite stiff, quite sticky. Um, so they just really gradually diminish in size as we go down the, the stack. So even a biff like me shouldn't get it wrong, but we'll keep them in the uh, orientation that they came off. There we go, we've just got that bearing to get off. Right, so there's our gearbox casting. Let me get some light in there for you. Yeah. A lot cleaner than it was uh, after we used the white spirit, but. Um, there's definitely still some sediment in there. So I'll get that out of the way. We'll have a look at the gears that have come out. There we go. As you can see, that's where our problems come from. Corrosion oxides that have got mixed up in the emulsified oil and basically created a lovely grinding rusting poultice in the bottom of our gearbox um, so 
the next job is to give everything a really good clean, uh, a good wash off in the parts washer, and then um, we'll give them everything a really good wire brush, make sure there's no rust on it, um, polish any burrs, make sure that the bearing surfaces don't have any edges or raised portions, ditto the um, circlip grooves, and then uh, I think order some new bearings. We'll change all the bearings while we're at it and um, go for a reassemble. So yeah, I think you'll agree this oil change has moved on a little bit, but I could not in all consciousness just rinse it out and put fresh oil in and run it because, um, well, it just would not be the right thing to do. And uh, yeah, you've got to look after your machines, haven't you? Because they cost an awful lot of money. And this one's done 50 years so let's see if we can get it through another well i don't think i've got another 50 years but you never know somebody might get it after me maybe my uh my young apprentices will take it on when i'm uh, long gone who knows but we're going to look after it anyway <laughs>